First of all, sorry about the background mess, it's laundry day tomorrow, so there's that. Number two, finally invested in a ring light so I can do videos later at night now, or when it's dark outside, which it is right now. I'm recording this in the evening because I was studying all day, so here we are. Anyway, so today is interesting because I haven't done a progressive rock or just a progressive music video in quite some time, especially my reviews. For those who have been watching my channel for a while, or if you've been here even since the beginning, um, I had a segment for about a few months where I would, every week I'd rank a progressive rock album. I am hoping to kind of bring that back, but in a different variant, I'll explain that in a different video. Um, but I thought since this album came up in my notifications today, I thought I'd talk about it on here and get the video out today because the album came out today, so we can discuss it in the comments. One more thing before I start the review, I have some very very exciting news, I have now got a Discord server! Yay! So you can click the link in the description and it allows you to join it, basically I created it for you guys, so you can reach me a bit easier, um, there are a couple of channels on there for leaving me recommendations like bands or albums. Um, I post channel updates as well, so whenever I'm posting a new video, if you join the Discord server, you know what video is gonna come out and on which day. So if you uh, wanna keep up with the channel, there's that. I also, every day, I'm trying to post a new album recommendation for you guys specifically. Uh, I try to mix it up a bit, different genres, etc., etc. So if that's something that you want to check out, then definitely do in the link in the description. I'm really excited about this, we've already had some really great recommendations and some good chats in the server, so it would be nice to have some more members. So let's begin with my review of the latest Steve Hackett record, which is called The Circus and the Night Whale. Sorry, I forgot for a second because it's got quite a long title. It's not even really that long. I'm not going to do an album of the day for this video because we're already talking about an album, so yeah. I've written all my notes down here on my computer and I guess we'll begin. So overall, I actually really enjoyed this album. It was nice to come back to something a little bit less heavy. I heard a lot of really mixed opinions about this album. I heard some people found it quite boring and monotonous, whereas other people were saying that it's potentially his best record in a while. With that kind of dynamic and very, very differing opinions, this is something that I was very interested in because I wanted to know where I would lie personally. Yeah, I'm just gonna go through everything that I wrote about it, try and elaborate on that stuff. I made my notes as the album was going on, so there are parts of this review which are about specific sections and specific songs. So we'll start off with the beginning of the record. I thought that the introduction was very interesting with all the different samples and it was quite dramatic and I like a bit of drama. Um, and I think that the beginning of the album really sounded like how I would imagine Genesis with Peter Gabriel would sound if they were around in the 21st century. So if they started up their band maybe like 10 years ago rather than 50. Um, it sounded like a very modern like adaptation of Genesis. Um, I really also liked the orchestral moments of this album. They were very elegant and really just nice sounding and the different chord progressions and how they fit into the songs were just really nice and you know it wasn't you know overbearing or anything i really really liked it the drumming i think was something that i picked up on quite a lot in this album it was very very groovy at points and at points it was just like perfect with the vibes of the of the music i think that all of the songs that had drums it fit just really well it wasn't you know out of place or anything it just worked really well. Uh, of course, being this is a Steve Hackett solo record, I've got to talk about his playing. His playing was absolutely fantastic. He demonstrated a lot of really great different guitar techniques and I believe if I'm not wrong, Steve Hackett was probably one of the first people to use tapping in music. Uh, I know a lot of people think it's Eddie Van Halen, um, but Eddie Van Halen just popularized it. Um, but if you listen to some of the early Genesis stuff, there is already tapping on that. And if you don't know what that is, I'm not a guitarist. I just know how it sounds. I don't really know how to do it, but just look it up. It's when you hear it, you know what it is. And his guitar tone was very rich in sound and very, very easy and nice on the ears. Uh, and you know what? While I'm talking about this, um, the production on this album was really, really good, actually. I liked it a lot. Everything was clear to the ears and it 
it was just really nice sounding. I really liked the kind of one to two minute intervals where there wasn't either, there are either no vocals or a little bit, so either instrumental or not. They were probably some of the best moments on the album. They glued together the songs really nicely. And speaking of that, I really liked how the songs bled into each other and it felt like one just long continuous piece of music. Uh, that makes so much sense being a progressive rock musician, having everything kind of linked and synchronized really nicely into each other. I don't know if synchronized is the right word, but how everything is just flows really nicely into the next and you know, the connecting parts were really nice. My first point, which is, I guess you could call it a negative, but you know, it's not at the same time. Um, so there was a really, really nice, very like 70s prog-esque uh, part at the end of one of the tracks, uh, the track Taking You Down. I just really, really wish the ending of that song lasted a bit longer. I was really excited for this little piece of music and then it was just gone within like a few seconds. So that's probably like my first kind of sad point about the album was that that bit could have just, I would have wished it lasted a little bit longer. I have that with progressive rock sometimes where they'll have this really nice musical motif and then it will just like cut out after like 30 seconds or a minute, like keep it going, come on. And I thought like that was gonna be like the intro to the next track and it wasn't. And I was like, oh, this is such a really nice part. And yeah, that was like a bit of a grievance, I guess. Yeah, there was like, I love when they put, when artists put rain, rain sounds in their music. It's so amazing because <laughs> at night I usually go to sleep listening to rain and whenever they put rain, people put rain in music, it, it adds a certain vibe. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, you know, when you hear rain outside your window, it's that kind of like vibe of, mm, what's going to happen next? Where are they going to go with the rain thing? Because you've got like, this and then you have like Black Sabbath, you know, doing rain at the beginning of their songs. So it's like, where where are you gonna take it? Where's the rain leading into? One song in particular that I thought was very interesting was Enter the Ring. And the reason why it's, it was very, very reminiscent of 70s prog, obviously. I'm acting like this is like a big surprise. Of course it's gonna sound like that. Um, and it was very medieval. There was some like medieval, really cool medieval undertones, like old English kind of, sounding instruments and the way it's written and um there was also a flute in that track which was very very jethro Tull. like even the way it was played it had a certain groove to it which was very ian anderson so i really like that obviously i'm a big toll fan myself the vocals were really nice they were very very nice actually on the ears and especially the harmonies there was some really great singing uh, not only from Steve himself, but also the backing singers as well were really, really good. I really enjoyed that. And as an album, I would say it was consistent. And sometimes with albums, they'll have like really good beginning and then they'll kind of like dip in the center and then it'll come back and it'll be really good at the end. But this was just very musically consistent in terms of quality. Um, there wasn't really a dull moment in this album. I was actually pleasantly surprised with this release. And I really loved the shift in dynamics. I mean, it went from like a really groovy beat to something really calm and basically just him playing like a solo or something. And then it will go to like these nice orchestral bits and then it will go back to more groovy and a bit kind of heavier, if you will. And yeah, as I said, consistently good album. I really liked the ending as well. I loved the last piece of music right at the end. I think it was called White Dove. And it was just a nice little acoustic track. And I loved that. And it was a really nice way to kind of end this album. I can tell this album has, obviously with the title, it was very, very storytelling. And yeah, that's what a progressive, rock album needs it needs a story so would i listen to this album again definitely i really really enjoyed this album actually upon first listen sometimes i'm a little bit uh something takes a little bit of time for me to get into stuff there's a couple of albums i've been listening to recently which have a really great start and a great end but the middle is it just kind of loses me a bit but this was really nice to have on. I was listening to it while I was doing my uni work and making notes at the same time, and it had me captivated most of the time. 
And yeah, I really do recommend this to you guys if you haven't listened to it yet. Um, as I said, I know a lot of people had differing opinions. Some people thought it was a bit boring. Some people thought it was great. I thought it was on the greater side of the spectrum. If I'm honest, I haven't listened to too much of Steve Hackett's solo work. I saw him live a few years back um, when he was playing, uh, it was the Seconds Out tour. I haven't really listened to any of his solo work, to be honest. So that's why I thought I would tune into this one and give you guys a nice video. So yeah, if you have listened to this album, do let me know in the comments what you think about it and we can chat be fun. Secondly, we have a Discord store. If you would like to browse that, then definitely check that out in the description. We sell all different kinds of records and rare bits and pieces, so definitely take a look, take a browse. Yeah, all my social media are also down in the description if you want to follow me on Instagram and X. Gotta get used to saying that still. And also my Spotify if you want to keep up with what I'm listening to. Why not? And definitely do, I'm going to reiterate this, join the Discord server so that we can talk about music and stuff because I am on there quite a lot and reading your guys' messages. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!